Well, today we are going to do some snow. Yay! It's been requested probably every year since I've started my channel. And I've just never painted it or demoed it. There are a few reasons why. Partially because of where I live. But today we're going to do a snow demo. Some really snow laden trees. And I hope you'll watch. Brr. Makes me cold though just to look at it. Kind of like you. All right, well, we're gonna get started drawing these out. I'll pop my reference up on the screen, although I'm departing from it a bit, which is what I usually do. But it's a good guide. I'm going pretty closely with the trees. And this kind of a scene is, is a good one, I think, just for uh, getting the idea of snow. The thing about snow, the reason I've held off Doing a demo is it? It's like any other landscape. It's going to be different depending on the conditions. It's just landforms. The color changes, and that's it. It's true you get some more gradations and some softer edges, uh, but not necessarily. This would be pretty close to a traditional generic snow scene with snow-laden trees. Now I think. Painting snow-laden trees is probably the most fun part. I love painting trees anyway. Now, there's a couple ways, really three ways you could do this. You could mask those trees off. And you can see here in my reference that there is like a distant hill that's very dark. And I like that because it puts some, some pop, some contrast behind those trees. I'm going to treat those a little differently, but you'll see that coming up later. But as I was saying, there's a couple different ways you could treat this. Now, I'm doing it piecemeal. I want that background to be extremely variegated rather than a solid color. So I'm putting it in in sort of pieces and then blending out the edges and letting those edges kind of go soft in places and hard in places. And I'm painting around the trees. Another way you could do it is you could mask the top of those trees off and then just paint straight through. That would be a very standard and a really good way to handle it. That way you could make the background soft everywhere. You could paint straight through without worrying about painting around each nook and cranny. But I just decided to go for it and paint this in pieces, in fairly manageable pieces. And it works uh, pretty well since I'm doing this as a vignette. And I'm going to charge in in places. Uh, another way you could do it is to not only mask, but to pre-wet with water this entire area. I'm not doing that. I'm painting wet right onto dry. And then again, as I said, I'm blending out that edge, those edges. If you're more of a beginner, you might want to mask those trees. It makes the washes in the background a little easier to handle. At least mask it down to where that hill is. So yeah, we're just going to continue filling in that background in little pieces. And you can see what I mean, hopefully, that it's fairly variegated and a lot of interest there over just a solid background. And I'm gonna treat that as a tree line later rather than a distant hill. Now I should mention the colors in this, are there are three colors that I'm using and that's it. I'm using cobalt blue, that was that distant hill or what will be a tree line. Now I'm using cerulean blue and I'm graying everything with either Payne's gray or neutral tint, you can do either one. Neutral tint will keep the colors truer to themselves. Payne's gray will blue the mixture a little more, but that's really not an issue since they're already kind of blue. Now here again, uh, there's ways to treat this, but these were pretty strong shadows. And I just wanted to go ahead and paint those in first. You could paint them in last, so the order is not super important. Again, I'm painting wet on dry paper. And I just wanted to put those shadows in. For me, I thought that would help me get the values in the tree 
right. Now, if you're doing something like this, uh, using reference similar to mine, you want to really spend time looking at the reference. I want to wash my hands, my face in the air with snow. I don't like formulas. I don't like saying you, do, you always do snow like this. That would be like saying you always paint a tree like this. And there's just too many different situations in which it could all look different. So you want to spend some time. But in general, uh, you get a lot of soft gradations in snow. Snow is really good at picking up reflected color. So there's not much in here. But if there were a sunset, uh, that would show up. If there were other colors reflecting into the snow, that would show up. And you're only going to get white on the very, very brightest highlights. So I'm, this is all transparent watercolor, so I'm just painting out everything that I don't want to be a highlight. And I really like the reference photo for having those really sharp, crisp highlights. I thought that would be an interesting painting, an interesting design to paint. Now, as we start on the trees, again, this is more cerulean blue. Really, the only place I used cobalt blue was in that background, that, that distant hill. The rest of it was cerulean blue. And I, I used a neutral tint here because it kept it a little bit warmer. And there was more warmth, at least in the reference, in these trees. So I'm painting the shadow side, and you're going to see this done in some layers. So I'm establishing more of a light to middle value. And this to me was the most fun part. And I'm starting to hint at the internal structure on those boughs. You know, the, the, not just the outline or the sh outer shape, but the internal shape of those boughs. Again, really spend some time looking at your reference. And paint the values. Paint the shape of values. Don't paint things. Don't paint boughs. Don't paint trees. Paint the shapes of their, their shadows, their middle values, their shadow values. Paint around the shapes that are the highlights. And you'll be successful. If you're not real familiar with trees, then spend some time at the outset drawing them so you have something uh, really careful to paint to. But all these trees are going to be done in the same process. Yeah, just a ton of snow. And you, here we're going to start working into the deeper middle values. And you'll, you'll see a couple more layers like this getting down into the final shadows. And I live in South Carolina, so we don't get a lot of snow. Maybe two to three a year, mostly in January. We have had white Christmases, but they're rare. Actually, we had a really big snow for a white Christmas, and that was in 2010. I actually have some pictures of that, and it was pretty interesting. I, I had always intended to get those out, maybe do some paintings. I tend to paint the things that, that I see every day, the surroundings, the landscape that I'm most familiar with. So, yeah, snow is not a big deal. And to be honest with you, I get tired of snow really fast. And we don't even get that much. So if we get, if we get more than a foot of snow and it hangs around more than three or four days, I'm sick of it. I, I'd never survive up north. But it is fun to paint, I will admit. But I mean, if you go and look at some snow scenes, uh, you will see that there's just nothing generic about a snow scene. They can always look so different. So you have to have good reference of what it is you're painting. And you need to study it. Well, if there was anything common about snow, uh, I think it would be strong shadows, at least in sunlight, where it's, it's brightly lit sun. Yeah, a lot of strong shadows in the sun, a lot of soft 
edges uh, until you get into hard, crisp shadows from the sun. A lot of reflected color. Not so much in this one, but, you know, it just as it would be with any other landscape. It's impossible for me to tell you, here's how you paint a landscape. Snow scenes are all unique. Well, we're just going through the trees and we're down, I think, to the final values, the lowest values, the little pops of contrast, looking underneath boughs and in crevices and down towards the center of the tree. And you want to get those nice little pops of contrast in there. You want to get that. That really is the spice. I also uh, want to go through here in some of these shadows and in the ground and just add some sort of rolling features, just some uh, shadows that help look like the snow rolls and peaks and valleys. And it's not, you know, I don't want a lot of flat shapes. Just uh, some features there to accentuate the contours. And really, this entire piece was painted wet on dry paper. Now you can see how I'm tre treating that distant hill a little differently. I didn't want it to just be a distant hill. I wanted it to be uh, just a ghosted, almost misty tree line. Just very, some very simple shapes in the same color. And we're going to finish this off by just adding some more granular detail. Especially up here in the foreground. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Um, patrons, I will have that uh, reference available for you. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you watching. Hope that was helpful. Hope that was enjoyable. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support of this channel. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.